Hey, yeah. what is up? <laughs> What's going on, Primal? How are you? This intro is uh, amazing. It's always killing me. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm 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 from the uh, '80s generation, so yeah, it kicks me back into the '80s with Game Boy. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're it's just awesome. we're just trying yeah. to breed, breed nostalgia with that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. A big shout to our third third co-host of the podcast, Kevin Loader, who actually created that entire sequence from scratch. You know, there, mm-hmm. most of the assets were created. Yeah. 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 Wonderful work. Yeah, Wonderful thanks place. so much. <laughs> well, thanks for uh, having me here. Of course. So uh, so for everyone joining us today who don't know Primal Cypher, Primal Cypher is one of the earliest uh, NFT comic artists in the space dating back to 2020 when things were just blowing up. Um, he's the founder of Encode Graphics, which is a comic publishing company. Uh, and he also has a project called Legion coming up that we're going to be chatting about. Uh, so Primal, thanks so much for joining us, man. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, to start off our questions, we actually like to get a little bit of backstory uh, of you as a collector. I see, see in your background, you know, you do probably consider yourself a collector. And if so, what do you what do you collect? Um, yeah, I have, I have to say, um, I'm, yes, I'm definitely a collector. <laughs> but uh, my, my collections are kept small. So uh, I, I have some gems in, uh, among my items uh, and, and stuff I collect. But uh, I, I'm not so focused on, on one specific uh type of collectible i collect mm-hmm. stones i collect oils uh agar wood wood uh and wood stuff and uh, uh of course comics comics are a big passion of mine um i grew up with comics and i love the art i love almost everything about comics and um how a comic comes to life and it's just just amazing yeah, so it sounds like you collect some things that are, I guess, not traditionally collectibles, or at least you know, from like a market perspective. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, uh, definitely the the wood oils or agar wood uh, wood pieces. They they mm-hmm. are not, um, um, yeah, not so many people collect this stuff. Um, but yeah, I I fell into the rabbit rabbit hole and I love perfumes, uh, perfume creations. So I also collect sandal wood oils. So it's it's. It's just a, a passion of mine, I like comics. That's cool. yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And uh, and some you have some slabs back there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have uh, some wonderful slabs. Um, this one here is uh, from Anko Graphics. It's a uh, limited to hundred uh, pieces, uh, twenty eighty four number one. And um, yeah, the rest are so my my, my most favorite series like. Uh, I have to admit, I always was an indie collector. I'm not mm-hmm. so much uh, into DC and Marvel. I have some um, comic books from DC and Marvel, and and I'm a big Batman fan. And uh, but I I mainly collect uh, indies like uh, Trans Metropolitan. Um, that was I think it was, it was drawn by Derek Robertson. He also did uh, the cover for 2084 number one. That's nice. credit for him. Oh, amazing! Yeah. yeah. For me, for me, Derek is a legend. I mean, yeah. he, also, he also drew the boys, and the yeah. boys uh, love the boys. Yeah, it's yeah. a big series on Amazon. So mm-hmm. most yeah. people just see the series, but never heard about Derek Robertson, who actually drew the whole comic book and are uh, many issues of the comic. So I also yeah. love Happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, um, I, I'm not sure. Did he draw Happy? I think I, he was he was involved in Happy, I believe. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm serious, but never never read the comic book. Have have to. It's a great show. It's a yeah, really I've seen the show, show, but I never yeah. watched the comic either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, the cool. boys is much better in my, my opinion, and I really <laughs> the boys is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I really hope that uh, one day they will uh, do a Trans Metropolitan series um, because it's just amazing. Uh, yeah, it inspired me a lot for 2084. And it's it's very social critic and and funny and and the drawings are just mind blowing the whole story. Uh, I think the story is by, uh, created by Warren Ellis and uh, he is a big big guy in the whole comic industry. So um, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Other series like Sandman, I wasn't yeah mm-hmm. that much yeah. a fan of the series, but the comic books are outstanding, uh, a masterpiece, um, like Watchmen and other. 
pieces. Yeah, so, definitely. So. And mm. I'm excited to talk about your collaboration with CGC. But first, for our audience, I'd love to learn, love to educate them more about your background as a comic artist and what led you to Web three. Yeah, I have to say, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't consider myself as a comic artist. I'm more an inter interdisciplinary artist. I, I actually started with oil paintings. Uh, but I'm also an author, a digital artist, an animator, curator, project developer. So I I, nice. I I try to create art in so many different ways. And uh, but comic art is definitely a big part in my life because it's such a big passion for me. And yeah, and yeah, my my background. Um, as mentioned, I'm I'm actually an oil painter, and in 2017. I was in Vienna in an uh, oil painting academy and met people like Alex Gray and uh, Amanda Sage. Um, Alex Gray also did NFT series back in the days, uh, but uh, a while after I, I started NFTs. And um, when I came back, uh, I was uh, I was actually not sure what I should do with my life. And I, I always, almost wanted to go back in my old sector of social working and all this stuff. Uh, and was pretty much done with art, but uh, some somehow I I typed in crypto art in Twitter uh, in uh, late 2019, and before that I also was publishing a little bit on Steam it, but I, I did yes. not do anything with. Uh, I, I remember, NFT. I remember that way back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> and uh, but. Um, I figured out okay that there there is something like NFTs and uh, the whole Web three space, and it was just a small family, but uh, it, it immediately it sucked me in. And the funny thing uh, is, I, I was buying an iPad in 2019, um, and it it basically was lying in some somewhere in the corner. I didn't not use it, mm -hmm. and suddenly I had a purpose for it and started uh, creating digital art and. Um, came into the NFT space. And as said, it was a really small family. Uh, and and some people supported me. Um, Trevor Jones, for example, bought uh, my yeah. first my first or my second artwork on Super Rare. And uh, yeah, it was just amazing because I, I, I got so much support from, from different people like Trevor Jones, Coley, and... Um, yeah, I just, just wanted to show. Well, show off some of your work here, just scroll yeah. through really quick, just so people can get a get a sense of your style. I love your style so much, and especially how much you incorporate like well, the, the Guy Fox mask and you know, kind of like the Satoshi and all that. Yeah, that's that's these are the really early nifty gateway. Days. Yep, the early pieces. Yep. Yeah, uh, was so much fun creating pieces there, and um, yeah, for 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 me it was a, a big learning curve because I was so used to the oil medium. And uh, if you're sitting in front of your easel, you don't have this undo button, but suddenly you have an undo button and you, you have so <laughs> many other yeah. options. And <laughs> I actually always was against digital art and all this stuff. I, I really wanted to be a traditional oil painter, and mm -hmm. but um, I had so much fun creating all this stuff and learn new things every day. And, and uh, yeah, I got totally sucked in. And uh, I also was... Um, very excited about uh, the whole uh, concept of NFTs, uh, that it um, uh, breaks up this um, thinking of a digital art is uh, not worth anything. Uh, suddenly you could limit uh, um, digital art and you could bring it onto the blockchain and create additions and uh, make it, make your artwork forgery proof and all this stuff. So. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I, I, w I actually was quite fascinated about the whole technology, and um, after a while, this this led me um, uh, to uh, to create a bigger project, uh, Anco Graphics, that is more focused on on comic art. And I I, I definitely as one of one of my big goals was to uh, bridge the gap between physical the physical world and um, the digital world, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to create comic books in combination with NFC stickers and uh, NFTs and yeah, so I think uh, the the crypto stamp in 2019 definitely also inspired me a lot because um, when I uh, discovered the crypto stamp, I I um, 
went to Vienna and met the people um, from the Austrian Post um, yeah. back in the days. Uh, <clears throat> um, um, he was called Stefan Nemeth. Uh, he was the original uh, initiator of the crypto stamp. And yeah, yeah he, he, he was so open minded that uh, I mean, I had no name. Uh, he had no idea who I am, but uh, I, I could uh, go to his office and had a uh, uh, one and a half hour talk with him, and wow. it was great. So, uh, yeah, so that's that's my background and uh, everything else, history. <laughs> so much happened in between. Yeah, crazy. yeah. Well, I, I I wanted to ask kind of on on that history. So, uh, you know, one of the things I do outside of comics and crypto is I work with Apollo Entertainment and Shoshiverse, um, who's been collaborating with Jose Delbo for a really long time. And uh, very early in your, you know, career in the NFT space, you were cl collaborating with Jose. Um, you know, kind of during that kind of like early 2020, like euphor euphoria period when NFT art was just going parabolic. Um, and I'll, I'll share you know, an example of one of the pieces you did with Jose in a second. But yeah, I was wondering if you could share a bit about your experience, you know, kind of just being involved in kind of like that, that period of euphoria and also what was like uh, collaborating mm -hmm. with Jose. Um, well, all in all, it was just wonderful. Uh, I was pretty much impressed that he uh, contacted me. Um, I mean, he, he back in the days, I think he was 86 or 87. Um, yeah, that's that's Whisper of Death. Um, yeah, Whisper of Death, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love this piece a lot. And um, he, he he was looking, he, he actually was looking for a colorist uh, that could manage a more old, old school style and yeah. uh, asked me if, if I would be open um, to color some of his pieces and um, to animate some pieces. And I said, um, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, it's it's an honor to collaborate with you. And uh, I mean, I, I instantly was a big fan. He, he, in my opinion, he's a true artist. He's yeah. 80, and now he's 90. He's, and, yeah, he's turning 90 in a couple of months, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. and, and uh, 89, I mean, he's still drawing. He, he really mm -hmm. lives that. And uh, that's quite impressive for me, so. Uh, you basically never retire if you're an artist like he is, and yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it keeps you young somehow. It's 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 good. good yeah, well, I mean, it's crazy. Before. It's crazy. He basically had like a whole like second chapter to his career. He had this whole like you know physical chapter to his career. You know, working with the big publishers, and then you know in, in 2020 he had the opportunity to kind of like remake his career again in the, in the digital space, which yeah, is just crazy. So crazy. so crazy. Yeah, crazy. And, and and at 87 years old too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very impressive um, character in the NFT space, and um, yeah, uh, we we actually had a good synergy from the beginning. And um, after we we uh, did this um, smaller collaborations, we decided that we want to do a bigger one. And uh, basically, he he gave me um, the death character figure. And I I could draw everything else in the background and uh, other figures uh, and um, do the whole coloring and the animation and so uh, um, a whisper of death um, um, came came to free edition and was published on Maker's Place back in the days yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's a quite limited NFT I think there are yes. only five pieces and the original black and white is still in the Jose Delbo family collection. Yep. Super, so, super limited piece. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. What, uh, what, quick shout quick, I was going to say quick shout out to VB Darkling. Thanks for joining us, man. And and quick uh, a shout out to Jose Delbo and also Nick yeah. and the whole schedule. Nick's awesome. Of course. Team, yeah. <laughs> um, so I wanted to get into a little bit more. You, you mentioned encode graphics and so you decided to, to to build that basically to focus more on the comic side of things. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us more about, you know, kind of just in general what your goals are with Encode Graphics and, you know, some of the favorite projects that you worked on, um, you know, with that company. Um, yeah, there there are so many different um, side projects I'm currently working on with with Encode Graphics. So I do not have a specific goal, but uh, I. I definitely want to drive it forward and um, um, to publish more uh, physical comic uh, comic books, of course, and uh, mm -hmm. um, try my best to to bring the project ba uh, back. You know, we are in the bear market, and uh, so many yeah. communities are suffering from that. Uh, so mm -hmm. many people left, and it it actually was hard for me to realize that m 
most people were not, were not into projects because they like comic books or comic art. They just wanted to flip NFTs. They just thought they were going to make some money. Um, yep. Yeah. And um, yeah. It's a sad realization. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a sad realization. Yeah. I thought uh, it would be different because the experience I made before was I was a solo artist and so many people contact me I love your art and they really mm -hmm. wanted to collect my artworks and yeah in, in the early days that's that's what it was like but yeah. and so so I thought uh it's it, it will be the same for anchor graphics and yeah but but I'm I'm, I'm still very positive and uh, you know how it is uh, comic books need a long time to uh, get produced because there are so many different comp uh, components it's it's not like uh, just creating uh, one artwork and uh, with with an animation i mean it's it's basically you have to write a script you have uh, mm -hmm. to, to to build the whole world uh, the characters uh, you have to draw all the drawings you have to color them you have to letter the comic book you have to do the final layout and it's it's uh, quite a lot of work beside yeah. all the development stuff but so um uh because you asked me here uh, in terms of goals uh i think one goal is definitely um to create more artwork series uh because this uh this is actually uh the root of anchor graphics we started out with, uh, on nifty gateway with uh, two genesis collections um people like will conrad and and um um uh, Tyler Kirkham uh were involved uh, back in the days um both legends uh mm -hmm. in the regular uh, traditional comic industry and um uh, um the the whole theme was actually based around uh Satoshi and um and the, and the early stage of 2084 mm -hmm. <clears throat> and yeah uh um, we definitely want to do our we are currently working on uh an, a new artwork series uh centered around um the whole crypto um mm -hmm. scene and and web3 scene and because this these are the roots of encode and encode always was uh a typical uh it was not a traditional comic publisher it was actually a mm -hmm. comic publisher born out of the crypto space and crypto art space and um yeah i want to go back to the roots a bit and uh it probably will be a collaboration with makers place and cool. maybe with bitcoin magazine but that's not sure yet nice. uh, yeah otherwise we continue uh creating uh, the the series we have uh 2084 uh, yeah could, could you tell us about a couple of the series here so yeah i'll, I'll go back to the 2084 page here you yeah can tell us a bit uh, about this one basically all our series are uh, very dystopian and um they they're heavily influenced by um techno uh technological developments uh futuristic stuff etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh 2084 uh the title is uh, obviously it's uh, um based on 1984 so it's uh, mm -hmm. quite dystopian and right. the initial the initial spark actually for 2084 I'm not sure if I ever told this anyone in in, in an interview was uh, yeah. <laughs> the Bitcoin time traveler story. Uh, oh, can cool. you can you remember uh, this this post on Reddit? Uh, there was there was a guy and he 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 wrote that he is from the future and people should stop buying Bitcoin because the future. I do remember um, that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, people will go crazy about Bitcoin, and yeah. the whole world will change so so dramatically, uh, dramatically, uh, dramatically uh, that it that it's insane. And um, I found this very fascinating. Obviously, it was bullshit, but uh, how it was how it was written and all it it, it, it yeah, it really impressed me. And so uh, the Bitcoin time travel story is definitely one of the initial sparks for the series 2084 uh where satoshi nakamoto also has his appearance um and yeah i don't i don't want to spoil too much um uh, there so are how many how many issues uh have you released of 2084 so far so far for uh there are five issues and nice. they are accessible for uh, all encode key holders on the encode.network 
um, um, encode key holders can uh, mint uh, the copies for free, but uh, you also can mint uh, a public edition, for example. I think the first four issues are uh, not so cheap. They're 0 0.03 ETH. And um, nice. you got some, uh, some nice collectors. Yeah, but the bad thing is I cannot change the price. <laughs> no. <laughs> the dev team uh, made a mistake, <laughs> the old dev team. And uh, so I would have to rewrite all the contracts. Gotcha. And, uh, we can uh, change the prices. But I'm I'm pretty sure we will do um, uh, a physical a, phys a physical drop uh, next year and nice. uh, future uh, future <clears throat> uh, issues are just uh, zero point zero one ETH. But maybe next year this is also expensive. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you never know. So never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love this series because there there are so many artists uh, who contribute contributed to it and uh Marchio Abreu uh he, he did the drawings uh he is an outstanding artist uh you can find him on Instagram and uh if you if you look at his at his profile you you know what I mean he is just amazing and other contributors were uh Sean Chen uh, for the first issue and uh, also Derek Robertson so uh nice. amazing yeah. you, you, you said Sean Chen yeah yes. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. We, we know. We know yeah. Sean Chan. Yeah. The yeah. One, great, great great right is from Sean Chan. But he started That's his awesome. own project, and I actually wanted that that he uh, <coughs> draw uh, draws more covers for the series. But he's very busy at the moment. He's been busy. Yeah, he's been working with twenty four seven comics and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and Daniel Wu recently on a series, yeah, which is which is really exciting. Yeah. 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 yeah and another series is Meta Tales. Um, Meta Tales is uh, basically um very inspired by the black and white um comic book series like a dark horse presence or caliber presence um all uh, comic issues are only in black and white it's uh, I, I love black and white the visions of the present became the reality of the future yeah that looks great that looks like Encode graphics point. present that pushes the boundaries. Yes, yeah, so tell, us, tell us a bit about this series. In which narrative art combines with visualization and culminates in an unprecedented NFT project. Eisner Award winner Mike Barrett. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, some difficulties there trying to, trying to get that. So. Yeah, no, no worries. Can tell if you guys could hear me or not. <laughs> You, you, you can look it up for yourself if you want on anchor.graphics. The trailer is amazing. Uh, when, yeah, it, when it came out so cool. so in, in 21, uh, I, I had goosebumps. And uh, I'm still proud that, that I started this series because so many people like um, Mike Barron, who created uh, Nexus, uh, or um, also Chuck Dixon, who did the Batman Nightfall saga, uh, was contributing with a short story. Uh, Aaron Lobresti and and so many other artists, um, also Chuck Brown. Uh, but this this will be an upcoming uh, comic book uh, uh, upcoming issue. Uh, did did something. Um, I'm not sure if you know him, but he's also an award winner with Bitter Roots. It's an image series, and yeah, uh, Meta Tales is black and white dystopian through and through. Uh, it's a lot about. Um, um metaverses uh ai and all this stuff so um yeah and i'm very excited for an upcoming issues uh, uh issue uh issue number eight um which is actually totally written by chat gpd um oh, there are cool three, nice yeah <laughs> there are three short stories in there uh we had to tweak a little bit here and there on the dialogue but uh the the, the actual story is written by chat gpd and honestly, I got a little bit frightened when, when I read the, the script. <laughs> it was a little too good. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's, 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 a, it's a really impressive. It's a, it will be a very nice issue. And uh, three artists did the drawings, uh, th three different ones, so totally different styles. Uh, and it's just a beautiful, 
uh, issue, uh, wonderful, and um, I'm I'm looking forward to release it. Yeah, that's Great. awesome. So so the best way uh, for people to actually get a hold of your comics would be to get the encode graphic key, right? Um, yeah, <clears throat> this, will, uh, you, this will give people access to to everything, right? That's that that gives uh, access to everything. Uh, you would uh, would be able to um, connect your MetaMask wallet to the encode.net work. Uh, and you could uh, mint all the comic book issues for free. And um, <clears throat> we will start new raffles very soon. So with a key, you can uh, make an entry in a raffle. And after, let's say, seven days, the raffle ends and uh, the winners will be picked uh, um, in a, random, a randomized way. Um, and something for the future, there will be um, fidget, uh, physical collections uh, for fidgetals um, and non-fidgetals. Uh, so in, uh, in the end, physical collectibles with NFTs or uh, non-NFTs. Um, and yeah, there's some other, other nice features. Uh, so at the ENCODE network is constantly developing, but we, uh, we also had to overcome many hurdles. And um, yeah, now we have a new dev team and fixed all the bugs and it's, it's working nicely now and yeah with a key you basically can read everything so beautiful yeah nice and yeah, so, so everyone listening if, if you are if you're a fan of primal cypher and his work and you want to read all of his, his cool comics and if you're especially if you're into indie comics and you want to learn some about some new series definitely make sure you jump on OpenSea and you grab yourself a key 0 0.05 ETH. uh honestly incredible incredible value for you know getting access to all this stuff so definitely uh definitely make sure you get out there and grab yourself a key yeah, at the moment, I think you can uh, read around uh, uh, five issues of 2084, seven, uh, no, six issues of MetaTales, but the seven, seven and eight uh, will be released very soon. And um, five, four issues of uh, the Dustabunks collaboration uh, with, and one one issue uh, call, uh, called the Cyrex, Cyrex Archive. Uh, it was done for the Trevor Jones Castle Party um which is a yeah. tribute, tribute comic book uh for uh, a lot of money uh who passed I, I away loved, I, I love that i love that piece so much yeah it, it's such a such a good tribute to him yeah yeah thanks uh I, I wrote the story in around let's say 24 hours two days nice. actually yeah and and uh was so much fun to create this story and the artist did a really great job yeah. So, John, you, yeah, you probably you probably have one of those issues somewhere in the room. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where it is, but it's it's yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that actually, that actually transitions to our next next question. Um, you know, being our podcast is the foundation of our podcast focuses on bridging the physical and digital space, and uh, and I'm really excited to talk to you about your collaboration that you did with with CGC, where you put NFC chips inside CGC slabs for the comics can you tell us a little bit more about that collaboration and how it came to fruition um yeah um as mentioned i um this this was one of my really big goals from from the beginning uh, to create uh, physical comic books with nf nfc stickers and nfts mm -hmm. in it um i mean I i'm still not sure why dc or marvel never did something like that because comic books physical comic books are actually uh, their roots and and uh, yeah, I I would definitely would buy such comic books if they if they do something like that. Yeah, you, they already would have a, ba a fan. Uh, just make Batman uh, one series with NFTs, Pff, amazing. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> actually, uh, no other publisher uh, with multiple comic book series did this, and. So uh, I definitely, uh, I really wanted to do this and um, found a partner in the UK uh, who did uh, the NFC stickers for me and uh, created all the collections with the artworks. And um, I created the physical comic books and I just bridged them. And yeah, and one, once I had uh, all these comic books, I um, was contacting uh, CGC and um through a contact i had uh, in, in in their technical um how do you say s sector or management and uh he was so nice to uh 
to contact the leading management and and uh, told them why NFTs are valuable and why it's actually a good thing to create uh, slabs with um, mm -hmm. that that state it uh, contains Ethereum NFT or an NFC sticker. And uh, so yeah, I got in touch with uh, the management and uh, told them my story and that I plan um, to send in some comic books with these NFC stickers and the NFTs mm -hmm. attached to them. And they actually were quite impressed. And um, yeah, they helped me to create this. And I we, we did seven issues uh, back in 21 for uh, Metadales number one, but I had to change the whole uh, comic issue. So um, I had to rework it and and uh, the, the small Bitcoin short store at uh, the short bitcoin story that was in there uh is not in there anymore so um in 22 uh, i sent in all the issues i had and um they graded them all and yeah 2084 number one this one is one of them um i'm not sure if you can see it but mm -hmm. there stands uh first appearance of primus and early bird includes nfc chip and a serium nft limited to 100 pieces and yeah it's for me personally it's uh, quite a milestone because this has not done before yet uh it's yeah. a comic book slap with nft um you can hold it so uh, so was it was it i guess a question was it physical first so you sold the physical slab and then they were then able to scan the nsc chip in order to uh, clip the digital is that how it worked um, yeah, uh, it's a 2FA system. Um, basically, you have a, a scratch rubber field on the NFC sticker and an NFC chip. Uh, if you scan the NFC chip, you get uh, the, uh, the public key. Uh, and, um, oh, so it's actually half, a wallet. It, uh, yes, and one half of the private key. And uh, the other half is um, underneath the uh, rubber scratch field. And if gotcha. you combine it, cool. and you, combine the two, you get the full private key. Yeah. Super cool. <laughs> and, and you can claim the the NFT. Nice. So that's cool. So yeah. Love basically, that. you already have the NFT with the physical. So right. And uh, yeah, it it actually always was the cover uh, as artwork. Um, yeah, without title and all this stuff. And yeah. Nice. Are you uh, are you still selling any of those? If, if people still wanted to get one, or are those all sold out at this yes. point? Uh, yes, at this point, uh, people could contact me via DM on Anchor, uh, Anchor Graphics, Twitter, or also Prima Cipher. But it's actually planned for next year to release more um, physical comic books on Maker's Place or and also in the Anchor Network. And uh, yeah, and but uh, I will keep the the future editions uh, much smaller. Um, <laughs> I think there, there only will be 33 or 55 pieces of each issue. Um, maybe there are two variants or so, but um, because limited. I think scarcity scarcity always was uh, a very important point in the early days in the crypto art scene. And um, yeah, I want want to keep the spirit. Makes yeah. sense. <laughs> that. Uh what up jg and then we actually have a, a question here um from stan so as a comic book author are there regiments you have to engage in in order to activate the supernatural inspired imagination um i yeah. have to look up the word regiments <laughs> because obviously I, I think, yeah i mean just like are there any anything anything that you do in general like any kind of like practices or like routines or anything like that to get yourself into the right mindset for um, yeah being being inspired <sighs> I totally depends. I think I, I have to be fascinated uh, about a certain topic um, or a certain story or a certain character or a certain goal, mission. Um, mm -hmm. And then it it's it's basically, if I can use an analog, uh, analogy, uh, it's basically like uh, eggs are floating around my head and sometimes they're... Uh, they're more far away and other eggs um, come near to me and one day they pop up and <laughs> I have the idea and make something out of this idea. And nice. yeah, yeah. So cool. yeah, 
but <laughs> all in all i'm pre pretty much a chaotic person so <laughs> and to, and i'm on my, my my mission to find my order so yeah <laughs> it's funny what up Loris king thanks for joining us um before uh we close out I had, I had one last question so you have a new project that's coming out called legion that you're creating through encode graphics right yeah 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 could um, you tell us a bit, a bit about legion and and what you know cool. what, what we have to, to know about it sure um yeah legion is actually um a, co a collaboration with distobunks um uh, aka disto labs um and so anchor graphics is more uh, is doing more the the art side and distobunks are doing the technological aspects and um yeah i, I also had the goal to create a nice pfp project with uh, anchor graphics um that meets my standard um that i have with artworks and uh because um quite frank uh, most pfp projects are totally shit in my opinion yeah. they just look awful and uh yeah sorry if I, i'm so direct that I, I hope i do not offend anyone but uh i wanted to see a certain level of 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 art in an pfp and yeah maybe the time is not right maybe pfps are died down it's uh there is not much hype about them but uh it's it's something as web3 project it's a must have it's something that you have to do and um as encode is uh pretty much about um cyberpunk uh, stuff mm -hmm. technological stuff and uh dystopian stuff um it was quite obvious for us that that we create a npfp in this style and uh so distobunks uh, collaborating with distobunks actually was a match in heaven a match made in heaven uh because we we have the same style and the same goals and uh we love what what what, what we what we do and um yeah and so um um we we actually started with a comic book series called Wiz um and i i gave this to banks um um how should i say i i brought it to life in a, in a comic way um and the whole story uh, around graystone city and what happened after the big war uh with with the ai the da data mass uh, da data master and uh but this is just the, the prequels mini series for a bigger universe called uh, Legion. And so, yeah, basically what you can do with the PFPs is um, they're not only beautiful collectibles, uh, they also will open many doors in the upcom upcoming uh, metaverse uh, that Distolabs is creating. Um, they will let people uh, claim uh, sandbox avatars and stuff oh, for sure. sandbox and also um worldwide web uh webland um the metaverse and uh, and other things i i do not know everything yet because encode is uh really focusing more on the art side mm -hmm. for this project but um yeah i think we will release it uh mid november and end of november um uh, at latest early december but uh, it will be released this year so yeah well i, I guess it doesn't look like your average pft project it definitely looks a lot a lot better than most of the ones that i've seen I, uh, yeah, just, just looking at the, the different ones here like it's just yeah i mean you, you can it see it's, so it's, your, it's your style and yeah it, these all look so cool <laughs> yeah sorry i i don't want to bash anyone but uh, no, I know how it not. was. Uh, people hired people on Fiverr, and uh, they mm -hmm. made for, for very low costs. And uh, yeah, the output wasn't always very appealing to my eye. And... <laughs> yeah, well, every, everyone uh, who's listening and watching, definitely make sure you give Legion a follow on Twitter just to be able to keep up to date with all the stuff that they have coming out, and so you can make sure to follow their release, hopefully happening either next month or in December before the end of the year um but yeah uh i think that is it uh primo it's been so great having you on and chatting with you and so hearing awesome. a lot more about about your background and your history and all the cool things that you've been working i mean you've just been pushing pushing the space and pushing the envelope forward when it comes to comic books um and especially the way that you're interacting with the digital and the physical space and combining the two um it's just so impressive so keep up the great work with everything you're working on and 
yeah thanks for joining us today thanks thanks a lot thanks a lot uh thanks for having me and uh, i just can give this back uh, what you your guys are doing uh, i love it uh, a podcast uh, so professional just about comics and crypto thank you guys <laughs> thank you thanks, so much thanks man oh and then uh we're, we're going to be announcing it soon on twitter as well but we have a giveaway that we're going to be doing with primal cypher and Encode graphics we're going to be giving away uh, a nice yeah. stack of of comic books uh physical comic books um so keep an eye out on twitter and we're going to be launching that soon yeah <laughs> can't wait thanks again thanks again for joining everybody and we'll see you on the next one thanks, everybody. bye everyone. bye, bye.